Hello? Um, sharing. Sharing is caring. Hello. <clears throat> is that why we all get along so well? Because we're always sharing our screen. And sharing is caring. Um, no, you're not a fan of the Care Bears? Oh my God. I didn't, don't really know. Don't really know? Well, the best part is Teddy Ruxpin. Teddy Ruxpin's another character that involves stuffed animals. And and the best part about it is that the, the villains that they're opposed to have a union. And and when they get to a union defined break, the, the villains, they stop. Like they go and have a coffee. Mm -hmm. Called the Monsters and Villains Organization, Mavo. Well, I prefer Winnie the Pooh. Well, you know, yeah. So <laughs> Winnie the Pooh doesn't have any actual, you know, the only real threats to Winnie the Pooh is really Winnie the Pooh. Well, there's the Heffalumps and the Woozles and, of course, those Jaguars. Yeah, but those are just acid trips. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you look at what how they're drawn, you're like, oh my god! Like Winnie the Pooh is clearly a creation of the '60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I learned about Teddy Ruxpin because I have brothers who are like 15 years younger than me. So there you go. Anyway, um, I guess I'll give it another minute. Usually have a greater roster. Um, I've been sick since Thursday, maybe Wednesday. Kind of hoping that was my turn with COVID because it wasn't that bad. Well, I would expect Hank to be here since it looked like you've been commenting on stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, like, so are you joining? He's in chat with me. <laughs> he, he was on for a second. Oh, maybe he had to restart his browser. Firefox told me it wanted to restart, and so it, I let it, and then it just didn't do it. Like it, it shut down, but it didn't start again. So I've noticed that sometimes do that, and you ask, and they say, I want to restart now, and you're like, okay. And then it doesn't. Hank. Yes, I am here. This is my stupid WebEx app. I tried it again. It was a mistake, so I'm here. Browser. All right, what are we going to do work on here? <clears throat> what can we um, so I close up? These, uh, so I think actually uh, some of these are really hard. Okay. And some aren't. I think the attester verifier one, is, I, I, I didn't, I actually made a comment. I don't know how to deal with this one today. Um, because it was so overloaded with different issues of text and a general disagreement of how this PR should be handled in general. And that was very, very difficult for me to address uh, right now. So I made a few comments and actually said, maybe we should cut this up and uh, maybe should we should have an idea if you want to uh, pursue uh, this PR. Uh, that was provided by Lawrence, I think. So, yeah, so you, are you talking about 149 or 154? I mean, the, 149. The, well, I think the 154 is replacing 149 now. Oh, okay. That is good. That is excellent. Thank you. <laughs> because I was not really following that line of thought anymore. And it was really, really uh, okay. Let me go with I commented this also. And weirdly enough, I did not really right, see yeah. that it was exactly the same thing. <laughs> well, yeah, a reading correct. is solving problems, you'll say. Good. Yeah, then we can shut up with this one, I think. Um, do we have Dave? Right. Yes. Okay. Is Ned here? Ned is not here. Oh. Yeah, it would be okay. good to have Ned for this. Did he say no, he no, it's fine. Uh, but, uh, Did he say he was going to uh, make it? Typical joints, so he would say if he won't. Uh, I think yeah, he's usually got something else beforehand, and I think that's what he. Uh, mm -hmm. Five minutes late. Let's um, go ahead. Okay, so 
Um, what what do we want to do with this at this point then? Well, I think that we need to get clear on what's local and remote attestation. Um, so everything in this document is supposed to be about uh, remote attestation, although some of it may apply to yes. local too. And so I think your main comment, Lawrence, is that uh, the word implicit you find uh, confusing there. And I would not disagree with that. Um, I think the when you look at the term root of trust, right, uh, usually when people talk about a root and you think about like a certificate chain or the thing that you're comparing against your trust anchor list, root would be the root of the chain. If you are using, say, endorsements, then the local hardware is in fact not the root, right? The endorser is. And so it might be equally incorrect to refer to, in this case, the piece of hardware as a root of trust because it's not. The manufacturer is signing it, and therefore it's not the root. The manufacturer is, right? And so that is sentence, I agree, is a little bit uh, confusing in the remote attestation case. Um, yeah, referring to the oh, term root of trust I got, here I is a simple problem. So I got to quibble. I think that the thing that you just <clears throat> described is a trust anchor. Yes, um, and not a root of trust. And and we have this at the beginning of the rat conversation where where we. I, I, I'm saying we've never actually defined the term root of trust. And to some people, Lawrence's statement would uh, Lawrence's problem with implicit would have the same problem with the term root of trust. Yes. Yeah, so this is so, so this is Hank. Um, um, I, I agree with Dave that this text is basically still everything about this is sort of remote. I made a comment in this yeah. section here that is closely not visible. It's just a little bit down. And and so so this is my first observation is this is about remote attestation and it's all applicable. So even the parts that are about hardware and level of assurance are applicable here. It's just an elaboration on security consideration for the root of trust that is in hardware. Then I would strongly advise not to use the term implicit or implied yeah. here. Yeah. I think we, we, we uh, settled with vouch for and my, make, if you could scroll down a little bit, I made a, a, a corresponding suggestion. What I'm wondering is, do we actually need to use the term root of trust or can we just delete that line? Because all the rest of the text is fine. This is just trying to say, uh, introduce the term root of trust in some way. Do we actually need to use that elsewhere in the document? If we never use the term root of trust any place, we can just delete the you, we, 800. I think we use it, but I have not checked that literally. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think there's a bunch of places, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's, yeah. there's about, yeah. about 10 occurrences. Okay, because that whole sentence, I think, was somebody's attempt to define in context the term root of trust. Um, and so if mm. we need to use it, then just deleting the term implicit, um, as Lawrence suggests, would be fine. So, so there's yeah. two uses of the word implicit. Yeah. There's also implicit trust in firmware, and uh, that's the one that really is has got me confused or uh, thinking it's local. Uh, um, um, Go further up. This component that is the component that is trusted. I think you'd say you need. We need to say something like this component is often referred to instead of the component that is trusted. I, I think, but I need to read it in context. So. Um, um, or. Uh, how about such hardware, just to match line 798, where it says, especially if such hardware, how about such hardware is often referred to? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, there's no. there's uh, this other thing, thing that says that, uh, uh, yeah, it's configured to implicitly trust firmware or or even software. Um, that I, and I, you know, from the conversation with Ned, or at least the comment Ned made, I thought he thought that was referring to local attestation. And when I you don't, say, I, don't, I don't think it's referring to local attestation. I think that, that what it's referring to <clears throat> is that, um, that bootloader, whether it's a hypervisor or, uh, a, a one block thing, that thing that, that, uh, that measures itself um, is effectively the verifier 
put some implicit trust that it knows what it's 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 work it's doing. That's what I understand. Um, yeah, yeah, but my, it's local. My, my understanding was that the key material that is used in remote attestation in the case that's being talked about, the weaker security case, that key material is not provisioned into the uh, hardware. That key material might be provisioned into the hy hypervisor. And so you might have a hypervisor endorser and so on. And that's what you're using in your remote attestation case. That's how I read it, saying it's just not baked into the hardware. And so it's weak for security. And that's why 797 says it's stronger when you can bake it into the hardware. But the verifier is implicitly trusting the firmware. That's the problem. It's not, there's no key material. You, the trust is implicit without the, without the crypto. Uh, no, what you're, what the key, what, what that means, you're implicitly trusting that that's the correct key material, right? Because you're not implicitly trusting in this exam in the EG hypervisor, you're not implicitly trusting the operating system. The hypervisor is the testing environment, and the OS is the target environment. And so the hypervisor generates the evidence, sends it off to the verifier. The verifier verifies it using the key material that was provisioned at the hypervisor. <clears throat> the fact that we have different they, interpretations tells me that this sentence should be cleaned up, <clears throat> which is what's well, his point. So, the, there are there are architectures where the the firmware boots the hypervisor, and so there's a trust there's a trusted relationship between the firmware and the hypervisor. There are also TE environments that don't depend on on you know firmware. Right, where the TE environment is a software TE created by the hypervisor. <clears throat> or perhaps it's just, you know, isolation between, you know, VMs or VTLs or whatever. Ah, uh, okay. The software TE was a little bit confusing, and I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I was just saying that uh, depending, depending on the architecture, the underlying architecture of the hypervisor may or may not draw into its TCB, you know, boot firmware. So I don't know who wrote the sentence that's now 792, but how should we clean it up to make it clear that this is about remote attestation? Is the, as Lawrence points out, the word implicitly is confusing. Is there some way to rephrase this that makes it clear about remote attestation and doesn't use the word implicitly? Yeah, the component that cannot create its own evidence but has to be vouched for is often referred to as the root of trust. And why do we need the word implicitly at all? We don't need it. Right, right. So what's the right way to rephrase it? And remind me, which section is this? Is this the trust model section? Yeah. Okay, good. Right, just making sure. <clears throat> if you just remove the word, the sentence seems to say the same thing. Uh, yeah, no, it doesn't. Re so you don't know why they are highlighting this is trusted. So the implicitly gives the sentence some gravitas by because now you understand why this trust relationship is highlighted. If you remove implicitly, you have to add something here. Otherwise, the sentence leaves. It's, it's just a weird fact that you highlight and you can just remove the sentence, I think. Okay. Michael, can you scroll up just a little bit? I want to read the text that's before it to get the context here. So. Okay. What what's missing is the mm -hmm. is the motivation for why we said weaker. Yeah. Uh, the more I read this, the more I'm confused by that sentence too. So. I mean, I still think it's better to have any discussion of stronger and weaker security and the security considerations. It is okay to highlight a specifica from the security yeah. consultation, elaborate here. And I think it's, it's worth the while mm -hmm. still today. The, the, the topic is on trust and you know why, how trust works. And it's okay to talk about how trust is different in, in you know, 
different in weaker environments, but it's still not really nailing down what that difference is. And I could so from a trust perspective. Yes, I'll tell you, but, I can tell you what I'm thinking, which is different from what the text says. And what I can't tell is whether I want to change the text to say what I'm saying or whether I'm missing some other point that the text is trying to get across. Um, to me, the trust model is you can trust. So one approach is to say, I'm going to trust the uh, endorser. Um, and it's the endorser's job to, to, to tell me which devices I should trust. Right. So that's one model. Um, and so I'm not trusting the device, I'm trusting it in, indirectly by saying, if the endorser vouches for it, then I will trust it. Okay, so that's one approach. That's the remote attestation case. And it's the typical remote attestation in this case. It is not the only remote attestation case. The other case is where I sort of implicitly trust the manufacturer, or the, uh, I implicitly trust the manufacturer, and I establish direct trust in the device. And so I get as the owner of the device that runs a verifier in an example, um, I get the key from the device, I manually inspect the device, I go through whatever security vetting, and then I put that device as public key into my trust anchor store and it says, I trust that specific instance because I've uh, checked out this particular device and think that it's good independent of what the manufacturer says. That one you might claim is weaker. Some people might claim it's stronger. I wouldn't get into that. I would just say it's more of a direct trust in a device rather than an indirect trust in a device via the manufacturer. That one does have the property that says, um, just because a device was manufactured by a manufacturer, I don't trust it. I only trust the ones that are mine. So the three of them that I bought are the ones that I trust, not the three that are in the attacker's possession. And so that's worth discussing uh -huh. here, in my opinion, right? I see. That makes that's the other case for you. So it in yeah. in the, in so the it's still... to me, there's a direct and there's an indirect. Indirect says whatever the manufacturer says is good for yeah. me. Direct says only the three that I've vetted myself, you know, inspected to say these are the three keys that are actually in my possession that I have uh, the physical protection around. So nobody can do physical tampering on them because I know which ones these are, and then I put those three in there, and that's what that's what I might personally refer to as direct trust instead of indirect. Um, but you, you, the the manufacturer is the one that put the key material in, right? Um, correct. Well, often yes. I don't know if there's a case where the answer would be no, but my expectation would be yeah, absolutely. And I'm just using, say, I'm extracting the public key when I vet that device and I buy it and I make sure that this is the one that I know. And so I put that, say, public key into my trust anchor store in the verifier directly, so that I don't care what the manufacturer says because he's going to vouch for zillions of other devices he made. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. And because I care about protecting against physical tampering too, right? As long as I have these three in a physically secure environment, all those other ones are outside my physical security. I don't know if somebody's physically tampered with them. There, there are root, there are cases, and then where the root of trust keys that are provisioned by the manufacturer are expunged, and uh, and yeah. then under control of the owner, they're recreated. Yeah, there might be a case where, say, on first boot or setup, that's when the key material is internally created. The fuse is burned at that point in time, and now the manufacturer doesn't have the key either. Right? That that is possible. And I mean, a lot of, a lot of this is like seems like it's implementation detail. It's yeah. certainly relevant to to trust and and. Right, the, but my point is the difference is between what, what direct wanna... trust and indirect trust. I mean, I guess you know, it comes back to what, what's the right, what do we want to say in these few lines that are fairly high level? Right. What I don't know is if some other concept besides the one I'm talking about is trying to get across here that's actually important for this section. So I, if not, I think, then I would just rewrite it to talk about direct and indirect, but I don't know but, if I'm missing something. Yeah, so I think there's another concept that, that potentially this line is trying to address, which is the notion that we that weaker trust is based on complexity. So as I kind of go from a very simple root of trust architecture to a very complex root of trust architecture based on a hypervisor, one could argue that the, because of the complexity, it's weaker. And so there's a lot of implicit trust built around that larger TCB, if you will. But you could still have, um, you know, an an implicit trust in the vendor that says, "I I trust everything that you did in that complexity, and that's my root of trust. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it." 
<clears throat> and you know and we're not well, the, the architecture not to, is not, not, to, not to provide comparative statements about this is better than this because they have they have different properties and they have different features and therefore different benefits um and i'm not no i'm not yeah. <clears throat> trying to be comparative but it's just the you could, you could have a, a constrained root of trust, which is not secure at all because it's completely done wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, you could have a, but you, but if you were just talking about complexity and, and in the context of complexity where in theory, everything is done right, right? Just, you know, it's like whoever did this knew what they were doing. They're the smartest people on the planet. They did it the best way possible, but it's still more complex. And so, the complexity people argue that complexity inherently is less secure. I think that's fine, but I don't think it should be in the in the fundamental text about trust. I think that should be somewhere else because it's a subtle point and and, and kind of a, a bit uh, a, a far afield from what we're... we're trying to guess at what these lines are trying to say. <laughs> that's just one possible. That could have that could have been what was intended here. We don't know. So let so um so I removed the word weaker, and implicitly mm -hmm. became directly. Um, and then I add of a specific device. I don't know if I don't know if that's what I heard you guys saying. That may be not tracking what you were intending. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be quiet for about five minutes while I author some text just for you guys to review and so right. i'm not going to change any of this i'm going to generate a uh, a, exactly. a a delta that might add two paragraphs into here and then we can decide what to do with these whether to keep any of mine whether to merge them into here whether to whether to use mine to replace stuff or whatever i'm not sure yet but let me i'm, I'm gonna write two paragraphs so i'm just gonna be quiet for five minutes you guys can keep discussing okay so hank suggested this text down here instead of um uh... The component that is implicitly trusted, he suggested this as well. And why is it lowercase, Hank? Uh, because we don't define it. It's not our. It's not. A, that's a Lawrence <clears throat> comment from somewhere else that he said this should be lowercase. I was like, yes. <laughs> so I just incorporated this here uh, on the fly. Yeah, I felt another issue yesterday that. Yeah, suggests roots of trust should be lowercase, which is fine with me. So uh, that's why I uh, did this here uh, by editing. Uh, it might be out of the blue for most. All right. Are you, is the word endorsement referring to the the new, more constrained definition? Uh, yes. And it also should be plural, but I think I did plural with an edit. So if you have five, this it should be a plural. What? What? what how would you feel if we replace components with such hardware? Uh, yeah, in theory roots of trust can be in software. So practically, they never are if you call them that. But um, yeah, I'm fine with hardware. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> See, there's, there's. It, so, software has to run somewhere, so in your, you know, there's a, it's always a combination of software plus hardware. You, can, you can't just have hardware running in, in you know, thin air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, the last I checked. Creators of the Pong great game would disagree. <laughs> I mean, at the, the turtles end somewhere and then there's hardware, I think you are right, so that is correct. Mm. But that's not the point here, I think. Uh, there can be virtual TPMs that would be software root of trust. And yes, they need a hardware one to really functions, for example. But uh, in theory, they could run on their own. Um, <clears throat> and they could run, really... you run your software TPM in a hypervisor. Yeah. Or in, or in a guest or whatever, or just run it as an application. Yeah. The, the or, point or... is that because of the design of the TPM as in, as a quote root of trust bit of code, you're just saying that your application is the root of trust. It's a weak root of trust, but you know, that's yeah, it's allowed, it, right? 
Um, and not all attestation is TPMs. Um, and you can run it in a in, the, in a no, the, level high level OS, and uh, that could be a root of trust. So that's the, the point. The point is, a TPM is designed as a, as just software. Yeah. Right. You can run yeah. you can run that software anywhere. But right. Right. Qualcomm shipped uh, shipped uh, the FTPM that ran in the TEE. Yeah. And it seems like somebody has software, TPM software, just running as a web service for testing. You know, it's just. <laughs> <clears throat> These exist, actually. Yeah. And so I'm fine with component. We could call it a system component to be very, very clear, but I think they're just more words. Right, I'm going to remove this one. <clears throat> um. We could look at the individual comment threads instead of skipping them. I think this is the one we just addressed, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So there's another one here with Dave. Uh, it's just an editorial. Okay. Yeah, that's the part that Dave's writing text about right now. Oh, yeah, this one here? Okay. I think so, yeah. No, in fact, that. in fact, it is relevant to meaning the the answer as to why typical would be necessary does have to do with the text that I'm writing. So, in that sense, Lawrence is correct. It's related. Okay. So, Lawrence, I tried to. And I'm only uh, half there now. I have uh, one short paragraph, but I need to either have a second okay. short paragraph or another half of the same paragraph. So, I'm keep, I'm going to keep working. Ah, okay, I thought we would present as the uh, half uh, half goal here. So, Lawrence, I try to uh, uh, rephrase yours. Is it still? Is it? Is it did I break it, <laughs> or is it still okay? Because you were talking about entities and roles in the same uh, sentence, and that was a little bit confusing to me. And I think to net, it is sometimes also confusing. So. Um, so that's what you would like to do is just add a sentence at the end here. I think that Lawrence just added a sentence at the end. Yes. Yeah, that was that, to. that was the suggestion was to. I was suggesting to add a sentence. Um, uh, I, I I still prefer my sentence. Um, the help of the endorser. Um, I mean, I mean, the point is that the trust flows through uh, the endorser or the attester manufacturer. You can't do it's it. There's trust, no... but that flows. <clears throat> it's, uh, yeah. the, the, there's dissonance in sort of the cross use of roles and entities. So we we need to stick to. We we should try to stick to one or the other, but not both. The roles and entities. An endorser yeah. is a role, manufacturer is an entity. But the problem, I mean, we have this big problem, in that the it, endorser is, and endorsements are just an optimal, uh, uh, an optional optimization. I don't um, know what that means. You, you can do it. You can do attestation with endorsers and endorsements, or not. You, if you if you don't you, you don't need you don't have to have an endorser or, or or an endorsement. If you look at the all the usage of endorser and endorsement, it's all about an optional optimization. This is kind of, I mean, I I, I spin around on this, but if you look at the, the but, I mean, I I don't think we've closed on the whole conversation around what an endorser is as a role, and we've and we've. I think we've added an, another I role. So I don't like and the I, word. I don't like endorser um, because I think of the reasons that that Lawrence has given is that I that it's not necessarily the um, it's not necessarily a required role. Um, but I do like the word endorsement, and and where I think Lawrence and I differ is that I think that an endorsement doesn't isn't always signed. It sometimes just arrives in a trusted fashion because it's keyed into the verifier by the verifier's owner. Um, 
Oh no, I, 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 I agree with you on that. Well, well, so so in my mind, we should we should we should gather around the the endorsement, and an endorser is a is a uh, scalable way to to communicate endorsements, but it's not the only way to communicate endorsements. So somehow someone has to provide the key material in the end, as uh, Lawrence always says. And as, but, as only because we don't uh, describe the vehicle here, I think the without the endorser, this whole breaks down. It's not an optional role. So the, the communication yeah, defined yeah, here is optional. I, I think. Think, yes. Yeah, I don't think it's. I don't think anyone's saying that endorser is optional. Davis, we've, we've made it optional in our framework because we. Uh, endorsement. Yeah, yes, you're correct. Endorsement is completely optional for reasons I've explained about three times. I would be happy to do so again if I wasn't authoring text right now. So, 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 in my mind, endorsement is is key, and that it's bizarre maybe to think that you can have an endorsement without an endorser. But what I'm trying to say is that it's and it, that relationship is is one where we we do something cryptographically, and if it just arrives by FedEx on a piece of paper, you can still get an endorsement that way. Um, yeah. But who sent it to you? Who sent it to you? But you're getting it from someone sending it to you. Yes. Even if you're sending it to yourself, you become the endorser. Exactly. I, 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 I take your point, okay? Um, but I'm trying to say is that, so what I really did is I made a measurement at some point <clears throat> of, of some characteristics of that specific system, and then I locked them down in the verifier, right? Yeah, and and that's that's what I did. Um, and uh, uh, yes, I'm the I'm acting in the role of the endorser there, but exactly. But but what I'm trying to say is that I think that's just that's that's a that's not necessary. It's it, I think that it it fogs the notion of of the other of the other way in which the endorsements more typically arrive which is through digital signature on them and 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 i think that by having to say and or, and or a whole bunch of places yeah. we're not actually been we're not actually we're not actually adding light uh understanding to the process but right. when you said so digital signature signed by whom now we're yeah, talking of course, if now it's we're... a digital signature then it's got to be signed by somebody yes the endorser yeah. I'm saying that that no. if I no, so and it, so a, 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 entities have keys and entities can sign things. Yeah, Endor, endorser is a role that performs a function, and that and you know the role is hosted by or performed by an entity. So when you say an endorsement is signed by an entity. You're you're basically saying that the endorser role is performed by the entity that that has the key that signed the endorsement. And if they're you're not, not using an endorsement, sorry, if you're not using an endorsement here, uh, you are still an endorser because you configure the verifier to act in a specific way. Then verifier owner and endorser are the same. So, so we wrote the endorsement. Collapse. We wrote the endorsement was a secure statement that some entity, typically a manufacturer, vouches for the integrity of an attester's signing capability. Yeah, right. I'm just going to interrupt to what say I I've have text. How would you like me to submit it? Would you like me to yeah. copy stuff into a comment here? Would you like me yeah, to that's submit? That's to be best. That's to What's going to be easy? Comment, so, comment. So just before we before we do that, because I'd like to close this this edit before I hit reload. Um, I I will with. I, 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 we, we had two sentences, this one, and then this two pieces. And the question was, which one did we prefer? And this was Lawrence's original sentence. And this was Hank's attempt to improve it. I think both of them are wrong. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this, maybe we should look at Dave's text okay. first. Well, I'm going to hit update then. And hit reload. Yeah, so, and, so the, a broad, sort of broad observation after having gone back through version six and just reading kind of the whole thing, <clears throat> we seem to, we seem to, the, the text seems to be inconsistent about the difference between an entity and a role. 
And we often use the role name when we mean an entity, and we sometimes, and we even say things in the definition. Some of the definitions say that a a role is an entity, blah blah blah, which is wrong. Yeah. <clears throat> Others say it's a role that is typically hosted by an entity, blah blah blah, which is correct. But we are inconsistent about. There's a PR fix in that. So in any of these, in any of these sort of proposed texts, you have to be very careful to read it in terms of: Are you describing a role? Or are you describing an entity? So, did, I, I just committed your hyphen, and I sort of just didn't miss the question you had about IDEV ID. And if you're looking for a reference for IDEV ID, yes, there is, but we don't use it anywhere in the document at this point. Surprising to me. So, which line did you uh, uh, create your uh, proposal for, uh, Dave? Uh, I've not yet. I'm looking for the right place to copy it in because I've I, I'd opened I, oh. my editing. I need to find in the PR what line it was. Now that you've scrolled up and what down. Um, uh, we were we were all arguing here about seven ninety three before. Uh, no, I was, I was looking. Some text. I was looking for that line that had the word. Uh, um, uh, implicit in it that we had all those comments on. I'm not 792. 792. This is one of them. The other one is 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 down here at at 800. So 792 has no diffs in it. Let me expand. No, that's right. It didn't. It didn't have a diff in it until we added yeah. a suggestion. 792. Uh, so I uh, right now I have uh, 149. Pull request 149 slash files and 792 is in the middle of the conceptual messages section. So that's not it. Are you looking at the original file then? No, I have. I, you asked me to put it in as a comment on 149. And so I went to the files view to figure out where to paste it in. Which oh, no. Why are you doing it 149? 154. We're on. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Yep. You're, you're right. That's why. Thank you. No wonder I'm having a problem finding where to paste it in <laughs> my screen. What happens when I switch from your screen to my screen is I put in the wrong one. All right, 790 should to, we should have Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. All right, I'm going to start at 791, the blank line here. So it's not necessary on a paragraph, but in between. So Hank, Hank, Hank so. kind of likes pasting the whole thing into Cody IMD and, and we can all edit it at the same time. I, I'm not sure it's as, I, I, I would like something halfway between you know, free for all and this is rather regimented, right? Picture preserved. Paragraph breaks. Okay. And add single comment. All right. Text posted. Feel free to bash. <laughs> because I know you will, or whether I want you to or not. So. Oh, okay. So you didn't make it a oh, comment. Text. You okay. made it a, a uh... comment. Well, uh, true. I could that gives a suggestion. Let me just edit just to make it uh, doable that way. I can just do an edit and put the yeah uh, put things around it. So um, that's trivial to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, updated. It is now in the suggested text so, so that you can do comments on it. Yeah. Yeah. Please refresh. I see how you generalize the uh, ev association with evidence. And I, I think it's okay. So in the de current definition of endorser, an endorsement, there isn't the notion of reference values and Evidence requires reference values, so I don't understand. Evidence, evidence. Certain, evidence does not require reference values. The appraisal policy requires the reference values. Evidence, evidence expects that there are reference values in the verifier somehow. No, the verifier uses that. The evidence has no expectation. The evidence <clears> is just data, right? It doesn't expect anything. Roles expect things. Uh, messages don't expect anything. Uh, yeah, in so theory, evidence could wrong. be two claims. One of them is larger than the other, and the verifier just compares. Is the first larger than the second? 
and if that yes, sure. it, it, it uh, succeeds. My, yes, so my point is that think reference values missing, are you're missing, to, to the points here. Okay, you're missing. You're missing my. Maybe I used the wrong word, but the the point is that evidence of is is useless. It requires reference values. Endorsements, oh, sure. as we define, oh. there are no reference values in an endorser doesn't yes. provide reference values, and yep. endorsements don't contain reference values. So the yep. sentence that is sort of talking about endorsements and evidence, independent of anything else that's unstated, is misleading. Which one? Which sentence are you talking about? The one that I can't see because it's on the top of the page. Oh, I'm looking at my own screen, but not, <clears> not looking at <throat> the switch back. So it's talking about that indirect trust by having an endorser vouch for the attester's ability to securely generate evidence. And so what's the problem with that one? Um, <clears throat> so I nothing think that's actually, true actually, even actually, if they're listening to what you said, because what happens here, and again, let me tell you what I'm thinking, and you tell me how you change the text if you want to change. Um, in order to do a praise, right, you need to um, have a belief that the attester can securely generate the evidence, and then you have to weigh that evidence in your term, uh, the, the values into the evidence itself against the reference values. This is only making a statement about the first part. The second part is your tester may still be using a reference value provider to help it appraise the evidence. But first you have to figure out whether you believe that it could actually generate, whether you should trust the values that are in the evidence themselves. In other words, is that actually a correct statement of the current state? And then you can decide whether that current state matches what's policy. <clears throat> so I agree with what you said. And I think the words say that and it may have been that it was because it was scrolled off the screen. I was okay. inferring. So that's why yeah. I, uh, my text here is all in the context of whether you should believe the evidence is a statement of current state. You still have to put that together with the use of reference values or whatever to compare it against, you know, a desired state or, you know, policy or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but all of this text is about the former part, which is um, before you can even do that, you got to believe that that's actually correct statements of the current state. And yeah, these three yeah, paragraphs yeah. here are in that category. So, yeah, I agree with that. So I added a comment to your text here that is visible after F5ing. Okay. Yeah, Ned, if you see something you want changed, feel free. I just want to explain what I was thinking when I typed it. So, Yeah, I'm trying to find it on my own here. 819. Um, I can't tell which line you were commenting on, Hank. Uh, it is... I, uh... Uh, very, uh, very up. This is the quote. It's a uh, very. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to find that. It's like seven nine five. Seven nine five. Seven nine five. Yeah. Yes. Can't can't. Will it let you add a comment in the comment? I don't know. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I understand. That's the line. But now, now I got. What was your comment, Hank? So my comment is that the, the uh, verifier has this key material thanks to an endorser because putting that key material there is the endorsement. It's not an endorsement uh, conceptual message. It's uh, the conceptual endorsement, so to speak, and that is done by the endorser. So the verifier owner probably is doing that, and therefore the endorser role and the verifier or uh, collapsed in this case. Uh, so uh, going I disagree, away, I disagree with I think every sentence that you said. Did Did you finish reading all of it? First of all, let me put it. Let me ask that as a group. Yeah, I, I, I read the second paragraph uh, after that. Okay, yes. please read all of it because um, mm -hmm. in the case where you have the attester's key material directly in there, I claim that that is the case where there is no endorser, and the the, the difference has to do with how many how many chains of you know one key signing another key are there in the uh, chain that you're using to verify the evidence and in this case there was one less layer in that level of uh, you know um, uh, certificate chains and that extra layer is the endorser that is not present in such case now there may be an endorser and I talk about this in, in um, uh, line um 799 okay and i want to distinguish it from that case because there actually is an endorser often um but that endorser is used at the time that you're putting 
the device's key or the attester's key into the trust anchor store. So the endorser may be the manufacturer. You go to the manufacturer, you say, hey, did you create this device? Yes. Okay. And this is the device that I bought. You created it. You vouched for it or whatever. And so I know that this is a, you know, Intel inside and it's the one that I bought. And so I put that key into there. And at that point, evidence uh, checking no longer checks for the endorser, which was still there, right? I just did that one time and not the time that I'm doing the evidence. The That's endorser puts it in the attester. You're, 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 you're uh, elaborating on how the key material arrives at the attester. Is that correct? No, no, no. I'm only no, talking about the verifier section. This is all okay, yeah, that's section. It. yeah, that's why I'm confused here. Yeah. So, uh, so why is this wrong? You, if you're saying the same things with different words, I think. I, I don't see the discrepancy. That is my, my personal problem only, maybe. Uh, an endorsement is one key signing another key. That is a technical implementation of endorsement? And but, I'm saying okay. that, that does not happen here. That does not happen because the only key that's in there is the one that you would have signed, and so there's no. Yeah, key and key. that is going to be different because I understood, okay. Dave, that when we wrote the text for endorsement, okay, that we specifically didn't want to assume that it always was in the form of a key signing another key. We wrote a exactly. secure statement that an endorser vouches for the integrity of the tester's various capabilities, um, and we wrote it that way because. We didn't want to say that that key signing another key was the only way of implementing this, that the business, such as you described, a direct trust was also a form of endorsement where you basically configure the three devices you trust in. Yeah, but um, like I said. Uh, I, I find that confusing, but I would prefer language that, uh, that uh, doesn't get into that point, but uh, meaning if we can find well, a, a more gener general way to phrase things. Well, but that's why I thought we said when we wrote the definition of endorsement, we wrote that it was a secure statement. We didn't write it was a digital signature or a, a something. We wrote that was a secure statement, and, and that implied that included, for instance, I loaded a configuration file with the hash of the public key and that was a secure statement as well, right? Um, so I did not get that letter fact. I, I got the fact that it's a secure statement. Yes, and there's multiple ways to do a secure statement. The emphasis on the word secure, and to me, secure meant signed. Okay, so I thought and that we said- Whether we, you're we, signing we, a key, you're signing something else. It's like a fingerprint of a key. So in that case, it's not a key signing a key, it's uh -huh. a key signing a fingerprint. And so that was my interpretation. Right, but the, but the, <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is that, that I thought that we wrote secure statement that it could also include a, a privileged file that only the you the owner can edit right that was the implication that 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 we're, we're saying look you can figure this somehow in a secure way you don't let just random yobos do it right you could you could assert that physical possession is a secure way yeah that was the <clears throat> point so i'm interpreting what you're saying as the conceptual message used to configure the trust anchor store so it, it, so it, line, it, line. In, the, in the case of 799, right? The case of 799 is the case we're using the particular message you're talking about yeah. to configure the trust anchor store. Yeah. So the so trust line. anchor store doesn't uh, may or may not be viewed as that. That's what I would I, I would try to avoid the case saying your trust anchor store is an endorsement. That's what I'm trying so, to avoid saying. So, so oh, I can, but, I can but, quote but, Dave. Yeah, I can quote Dave on yeah. lines 806 to 809. Uh huh where he makes the case that physical possession is a form of trust that's not signed. So the, the debate, the debate Dave is, against Dave. The debate is whether or not the physical <laughs> possession is an endorsement. That I think is what it amounts to, right, Dave? Yeah. That I think what we're arguing about is, is whether or that's not. That's not what I'm arguing about. That is, interesting. that is an interesting philosophical debate, but that's not what I'm arguing about. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure if philosophical. I understood that that's why we wrote secure statement rather for endorsement, rather than being very specific about that endorsement is a is a <clears throat> is a is a signature we, operation of some kind. I mean, we we said we in our definition of endorsement, it, we said. Okay. Last, the, last I, I, checked, I, second, that, I, I will say that nothing on, in this Dave. uses the term endorsement. But go ahead. Endorser, okay, yes. Okay. Endorsement is not used in here. But, but, but there, we've paired them up, right? Only, and only an endorser can provide an endorsement, apparently. <clears throat> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and the way we've defined endorsement is that it's 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 making a statement about capabilities in the a testing environment. Though we said we couldn't use that word because of some reason, <clears throat> but we meant that that's what we really meant was the the testing environment, which. One could argue the very first one in the platform is the root of trust, and we all understand that 
the root of trust, you know, <clears throat> can't speak for itself. And so the endorsement is the thing that speaks for the capabilities in the root of trust. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't have to, the statements that can be made about those capabilities don't have to only involve what key you have. It can talk about the environment that protects the key, even if there are no keys or in the environment yes. that produces the keys, even if there are no keys. I'll let you respond to that because so I have let, a comment that's not in response to Ned. So let's uh, let's go around the room oh. here, um, and uh, I haven't heard from Peter or uh, at all, uh, and I haven't heard from Andrew uh, at all, and we haven't heard from Lawrence lately. Maybe you guys can 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 inject something that solves this problem as to whether an endorsement is digital signature only or not. I tend to think of it as more than that, but uh, I, I, I've been very hesitant to wade into this. <laughs> I mean, I proposed at times eliminating the, the use of endorsement because I think it's got preconceptions of what it is and um but that is not the topic it's a problem that uh, is the endorser involved here or is it not so it says rather than the endorsers that is pretty much the here, point you have to say just be oh. more specific as to what the question is so is it involved in what so is is the uh in the uh having the verify the attester's key i think it's boiling to back to that again uh, uh, Dave says, uh, as an endorsement is only a key signed by a key, no, the, the endorser is not involved here. And when you say, well, it's not only that, it can be any kind of endorsement format, the conceptual message is only our standard way to do it, it's fine here, you can have them collapsed and they don't have to communicate at all, and then the, uh, the endorser just uh, defines the key with the, with the, with the measure into the... Uh, 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 key store, uh, the, the trust store, whatever you want. And uh, therefore, uh, it is not necessarily an endorsement used here when the roles collapse, and they collapse, I think. And and therefore, it's still there. And Dave says, no, that is not the case because an endorsement uh, outputs only keys signed by keys. I think that's the point, right? Well, I'm all in favor of finding a wording that doesn't uh, have to answer this question. So I don't know if uh, Andrew ah. hasn't spoken up yet, and Michael, you wanted to ask Andrew if, if he had any comments. Yeah. So, Andrew, so, he's, now muted. he's now muted. Yeah. Andrew's now muted. So he obviously was unmuted before. Um, uh, I'm fine with changing wording to 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 not have to get into that question. I think it's far more interesting to get the main point that I'm trying to make across than it is to try to uh, uh, try to argue about whether an endorser exists or not or whatever. So let me so let me Dave try to 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 make sure that I. To restate what you just said. So we all agree that there are many ways in which an attest a verifier can get trust in an attester. And yes, we're trying, and I'm trying to, to find describe two of those. Yes. Yeah. We're and so there, the, and we know that there's two ways. One is that I copy and paste the attester's key if it has one into the verifier, and another way is that I receive that key through. Uh, a signed artifact from a, 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 a something like a manufacturer, and I'm specifically saying um, entities here rather than roles. Okay, sort of. Uh, although um, the way that I would break it down, it's almost that you, you're not you're not incorrect. Um, I would say you're either doing it at the time of uh, evidence generation. You're verifying that the key chains up to the endorser's key, which is sitting in a trust anchor store. All right. That's or um, you're verifying that it chains up to the device's key. The only difference between what I said and what you said is that you that an endorser may be involved a priori at the time of trust right. anchor store configuration. That's the only difference. So that's the right. friendly right. amendment right. I would make. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, otherwise, yeah. yes. So, so yeah. So so and, and it comes back to this, and I'm still frustrated in general that we don't have a way of of you're essentially talking about a PKI of order zero where you where you just configure the test yeah. key so, PKI of order greater than one where there's some some number of 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 um 
of artifacts, right? So, right, so we right. agree that those are the two, the two kinds of a, spaces here. And there's a middle no. ground, which is the hybrid, which is you run your own endorser, and then your own endorser only endorses the things that you would have put into there. And that's well, kind of so, so what you're doing is you're accomplishing the second process or the, the second paragraph where I have yep. some number of, of devices yep. decided that I need to indirect, add a layer of indirection, right. uh, internal layer of indirection, right? Um, yeah, but fundamentally, it's no yep. different than the other sure. one. It's just that I decide to store it differently. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so we all you are hang understanding on, my hang point on, perfectly. Hang, hang on, Lawrence. Hang on, Lawrence. So, sure. the, 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 so if if we so um, if we all agree with those two two those mechanisms, and I think Lawrence wants to disagree, but let me just finish. If we all agree with those things, then we're simply looking for an appropriate set of language, which maybe involves the word endorsement or endorser. Um, to explain those processes. Now, Lawrence, you want to add a, another case? Well, the, the 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 key material, the way the key material gets set up, I mean, it, it could be through KDF functions and on and several layers. Uh, and totally, stuff. I totally agree with you. I didn't say how I moved the key from the attester to the uh, verifier. They could, yes, all be derived from the same uh, secret uh, KD, through a KDF. Yes, I totally agree with that. I'm not saying anything about how that happened. So there's no, I mean, the number of levels of indirection could be two or seven or zero or, right? Right. That's the right. point is that, the point exactly. is that in the case where it's yeah. zero, then I, I have no, I have, I, I have to configure every device. I have to ex bless each device separately. Bless. Yeah, exactly. When it's yeah. non-zero, then there's some level of indirection that lets me bless many devices at the same time. Which may or may not be signing. May or may not be signing. So I think we all agree with that as well. So, Did so, we agree with that? Yeah. Well, uh, so what's so if I look at the text that's on the screen, this is entirely describing direct case. Our conversation is about the indirect case for which there is no text to review. Which indirect we, case are you referring to? Because uh, it's before uh, uh, on seven ninety four. It's the text that's above seven ninety four is the direct. Where. So yeah. I read, and I, I had further. I had further comments. Um, okay, so so so, so I. <clears throat> well, what I would like to do is I would like to accept Dave's text right now here, okay, um, and the other suggestions in this bat in this batch, and such that we can now comment on them because that's the only way to do it. I, I, I'm I'm okay with accepting. Sure. I'm okay with accepting D Dave's text. Um, the problem I have is that there's the first sentence, which is the paragraph introduction, talks about the, the indirect case, and then it switches to the direct case and doesn't expound on what we mean by indirect. But the last, you know, little bit of conversation amongst us was about what, is, what does the indirect case mean? And there's, we, we don't have any words to ground, to ground us on. <clears throat> so it seems like we're just we need to write something down and then talk about it. And so I think that Dave's point was no, I do talk about the indirect case. It's it's that first sentence. I'm just saying maybe we need more than one sentence. Explain what indirect. Means. What I'm really hearing here Understood. is that, is, that um, is is a desire for an xxx add text here, add more text. About indirect case. Be seven ninety. Yeah. Well, so I added yeah, it at yeah. the end here. Okay. I added yeah. it at the end here, but but yes, it could so, be because the seven ninety seven ninety four is where we transition to talking about the direct case. So it's between seven ninety three and seven ninety four is where it should go. Yeah, I agree with Ned. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah, you can insert a paragraph break there, for example, and add the comment in there or something. And I think Michael's comment on uh, you have to touch every device by yourself with a, with a zero indirection, and then you can add levels and bless them more than one at, at the same time is, I think, a very intuitive way to phrase this. Maybe we can have some introductory text somewhere in the scope that helps us to ease into this uh, section here. Yeah. I always wish that was in like RFC fifty two eighty or something. It's not mm -hmm. really. Um, yeah. I mean, that's where we start with PKIs and stuff, and it's not there. Maybe it's somewhere else in some other document. 
I have never read something that is very concise. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tried to start a thread on SAG or somewhere else about uh, how do you number the levels of a PKI um, and because um, there's two possible numberings, right? Zero and one based. <laughs> um, uh. And right. So so when when you do put that, when you do configure that that end device uh, key into your trust as a trust anchor, is that a PKI of order zero or one? Right. But the concept, I think it was from out on, I'm actually not so, I hope we don't go into the numbering thing, but direct versus indirect means it has an implication on how granular trust relationships has to be established. I think that is fine to know. And I think that makes this whole uh, uh, other exposition text from Dave, uh, it eases into that, I think. So, um, what do we... What what if what if we what if we actually went further and split this into two subsections, direct trust and verifier and indirect trust and verifier, or by verifier, in or by I don't know which. It would be uh, the reason, by, the reason, it would be by I, if you choose to do that. The the reason is that I think that it it may be valuable to ha be able to refer to section numbers on this topic. Oh, so the objection, I don't know whether it's necessary, but that's why I don't have an opinion yet. It's yeah, I mean this is starting to be a wall of text, right? Mm -hmm. But okay. it is let's, just briefly, let's yeah. just briefly talk at the top of the hour um whether this this the changes that wound up to this sentence are acceptable. If you notice uh that that one sentence there. If this is the sentence that I posted pasted stuff before, my intent was that that sentence would be replaced, but uh, that's up to you as to whether you agree with that or not. So, Your text would replace the sentence completely. That is one straw man, yes. There might be yeah. more changes necessary, but that would be my original intent. Because there was a bunch of changes we all had with that, uh, with that yeah. the problems we had. Lawrence had some okay, problems, and I was convinced that I had problems before I read it. So, let, let's, let's leave that for the moment. And what about this, this, this change here? So, so I think we are favoring the term direct and indirect, and we have no definition for implicit. Yeah, I agree. There, 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 there is a use of implicit in a completely different context with a different meaning um, oh. in the text that talks about how you can do transmission across a secure channel or rather than sign right. evidence. And we use implicit there in a completely different meaning. And so, yeah. So, so this, 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 this change also gets rid of this word implicit because it doesn't appear so we changed the 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 we had a suggestion before hank had a different suggestion i deleted my the previous suggestion that had such hardware um, um here i'm curious because this is while i was busy why did yes. you lower case roots of trust is that no longer oh. a term that you want to use out in the document it's not oh, that a, is the thing is in the document yeah, so the we, problem is not in the terminology section defined. Everything that is defined there okay. is capitalized with us. So uh, Lawrence made a comment. Okay. It's not the terminology. Right. This shouldn't. And I was yeah, there's no way. He's okay. right. <laughs> all right. And uh, we also I that we also did the same thing elsewhere in the doc. So that's fine. We, yeah, that is we true. All, yeah. We also reason we we decline to define root of trust is because it has definitions elsewhere, and the other definitions are too complicated and involved for us to try to repeat to get consensus on. I wasn't I asking about that. I, I know. I, I just think I, so. That's why it's yeah. not in our. That's why it's not a term term that we have defined. We've left it defined from elsewhere. Is the point? The point. So well, given that, are, you happy, are you this, happy? With this the, sentence the, is a thing? definition. This yeah. sentence is a definition that's saying in the, for the purpose it applies for the purpose of this document. When we use the term roots of trust, we mean components that have to be vouched for via endorsements because no evidence can be created about them. That's that's okay. that's an implicit that definition is, here, which I find an implicit. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Components. Okay. Uh, second, let me read it again. Um. Yeah, I'm fine with that wording. I read it three times, and everything I could think of that I would have a problem with, this fixes. So. Uh, I mean, isn't saying that no evidence about them is a little broad? Um, do you really mean that it can't be created during the attestation or 
is part of the attestation, right? Yeah, ever. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the attesting environment cannot create evidence about itself, literally, this implies also. Right. And therefore, it, uh, like it just says it's impossible to create uh, evidence. I, I, so Peter, I can give you, I can Peter, give you an example. About, because no evidence is created about them. What about that, Peter? Yeah, that's better. <clears throat> so I, I, I can assert that a TPM, that, that it's possible to create evidence about TPM. So right, Michael can make the change of 10 beta is? Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I just had to refine the, beforehand. the, the, the uh, thing. So because no evidence is yeah. created. Could you then, uh, when you're ed editing here, could you uh, exchange created uh, and uh, remove created and generate it? Because you generate evidence all the time and... Um... Well, uh, another way to phrase this... We say this, collected. We, we, uh, we use the term uh, collected. This is generated is the term we use. Um, yeah, literally. generated is fine. Uh, I think yeah, this is fine um, because this is late in the document. We've already talked about the two types of environment. Um, I think what we mean here is that those components are never a target environment. Yes. Now, I'm not saying we had to start yeah. to phrase it that way, but that's how I'm interpreting what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. Mm -hmm. It's never a target environment. But, but a, a testing environment isn't necessarily a root of trust. Uh, correct, because in a testing environment can be in a target environment in layered attestation. Right. So that's why I'm fine with this text here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's fine. Except. Nicely worded. Do we want to elevate it to in a definition since we're defining it here? No. <laughs> endless, endless, endless arguments about it in the in the group. We have fit it so line? well. Let's uh, keep it here in line. Gr gr grammar knit, you say a roots. You need to fix either. Uh, let's see. Oh yes. Such components just delete the word a. This is now plural. In the sentence. As yep. that's what you're saying? Yep. Yeah, that's right. Because it's components plural. Yes. Being endorsements it, are not optional it, anymore. Doesn't it? No, I read it three times to make sure that it was not. It's because it does not assume that you actually have to vouch for it. That's why I'm saying this is nicely weasel worded. No evidence is generated. It doesn't. It doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means that we don't yeah. do it. It says that's the only way to vouch for it is by doing that. It doesn't say that you have to vouch for it. It's actually nicely worded. So, okay, all right. To, it's, to, it's to people that don't think about hour. it, it tells you what 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 Lawrence would, what Lawrence expects. The people that care about it, they said, well, then it's actually fine. And so it's actually very nicely worded because it does not break into jail in that sense, right? So Lawrence and Hank, it would be great if you could come up with some exception acceptable merging of this these sentence here on this recommendation because you were in disagreement as to how it went um okay oh. and then the concept was that this sentence would go away as would this change if uh based upon what dave said and i think that everyone wants to think about that for a minute or unless we're all conclusive already um i i'm afraid we're going to forget it if we don't do something now at least put it in as a uh, comment um if not a suggested text to delete you could also just do the plus minus and have it be empty yes okay yes i can do that uh as an alternate yeah you know, as an alternate comment and you can decide which one to commit then okay do, do, do. Are you trying to uh, accept this complete review here? No, no, he wants to leave it open, I think, and have people think about it if I want to, right? Yeah, okay, so that that's the other suggestion, yeah. Yep. And you can go here to, you know, give your reaction. You know, rocket means, we don't know what rocket means. We have no idea. Blow it up. You know, all sorts of things. I don't know. Some of those, if you hover over them, it has a word, but. Yeah, that's right. It says, yeah, it says so, rocket. Oh, it says rocket. Okay. Yeah. Eyes, hooray, laugh, 
hard. Let's laugh at minus this. Minus one, plus one, confused. Okay. Right. Meanwhile, Facebook still doesn't have a frown. Okay. Good uh, all right. Well, um, we spent most of this today on this pull request. Um, um, I, I will close this one once I make sure that it works. Because there was an X in the uh, Can we close issue. 149? I think it was uh, my yeah. mistake to even work on that. So we show Lawrence, would you just close your own... Um, PR, yeah, thanks. Because uh, it uh, it's uh, it l looked at me. I was like commenting on it again, and I don't want to do this again. <laughs> okay, so one four nine. Oh, oh Michael can. Okay. Whoosh. Um, if we've closed all of the, if we, if we close all of these, are we done? Uh, until still, the working group last call, but yeah, until working group I last still, call. I mean, there's the whole thread on, on the definition, the definitions, the impact of changing the definitions on other, other drafts that are interpreting them differently and what, um, has been changed. Seems like something we haven't talked about. Uh, also, a trivial one that's the uh, lowercase roots of trust throughout the document. Yes, fine. There's still so 14 all. open issues. <laughs> exactly. Lawrence is correct. There are issues. I commented on the sixth most recent, it's November 2nd. Just listen to me. Oh, sorry, October 2nd. Was it? No, it was November 2nd. Yes, 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 yes. Cut off. Right, so that's the cutoff date. Is yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I would like us. I, I would hope to be finished to the point of being able to start a working group last call before that date. Um, but that's up to working group. Chairman. Yeah, I would have to do a, a consistency pass at least one, probably two, if I know from speaking for experience. When we uh, uh, conclude this meeting. Uh, and then uh, I would uh, hope that other people also do. But I will sure. most certainly commit 100% to do one before we submit a document before sure. cut off. I, I, I don't think it's a problem if that consistency pass happens during a working group last call. Um, but um, I think uh, it is. Okay, well, great. Have we made a decision to not disposition the... the rest of the, the open issues or well, no i have to go through them one by one actually we are like 15 over the hour so sorry but uh these are some of these are actually reasonable and very very, very have merit okay. all right well so then we need to to, to have a uh walk through them and ideally try to turn some of them into text okay mm-hmm Okay. Um, I just right. created a pull request. I just created a pull request that all it does is it lowercase root of trust throughout the document, and so it's trivial. Okay, that's one issue. All I did was a global search and replace. Um, oh, apparently it picked up the same one. Uh, my bad. That was not intentional. I must have started from not matching. Let me just do a quick rebase here. Yeah. Um, and all right, then please refresh. Apparently, it was based on top of the other change and not on top of. Uh, uh, oh, wait. Um, it may still not have picked it up correctly. All right. You, you can. Uh, if I have to, it may take me another minute to fix that. I think, yeah, it didn't, it didn't do it right. So uh, I just need to delete those paragraphs here. So um, <clears throat> there should be no changes other than lower casing of characters. 
So I, th I think in general we should go through the issues list to see if any of them can be closed based on other pull requests that have, uh, that have been addressed. There may be a couple that fit in that category. Okay. Uh, there may be some that are not important to address, uh, like the Appendix A time considerations, regressions, maybe that's not critical. Uh, but what what would we say is our process for you know coming I, I, through the issues list? I would say that first of all, if you believe it's closed by a pull request, then you should just enter that. And if if at least another person agrees, then then close the issue. Um, and um, that we should spend next week going through all of that. Um, I have another IETF meeting at ten o'clock on Friday now, so can't do that. Um, and, um, I don't know what other times are workable between Hank and, and, uh, Pacific coast times. Um, uh, I'll let you guys decide. Um, okay. you can refresh. It's fixed now, I believe. Looks good. Uh, Hank is typically available until 9 a.m. P, uh, DT or PT. And then uh, uh, I can uh, now allow for more if uh, I can well, have if, indication if you when. Want, if you want to do 9 a.m. PDT on Friday, I'm okay with that. No, Friday, no, no, until Friday, uh, 9 a.m. Yeah, so I can start at 8. Huh. I mean... You start at eight, um, so that's eleven for me. Um, I am not available at eight uh, a.m. PDT this Friday. Normally I would be, but this Friday I've already got something booked at that time. All right, so so <clears throat> we might go for the following Friday then, um, as as an additional day. Yeah, that's um, okay. Now the sixteenth is okay. Okay, so I will I will just drop the calendar entry uh, onto that as well. Um, I think we'll need the two extra days for sure. Okay, so that one's closed. All right, so let's come back. Anything we can resolve on in between is great, uh, obviously. Um, and I kind of wonder whether in some cases we should um, take some of these issues to the mailing list um, simply to hear what people have to say. Friday the 16th. Back to editing, but what time it's going to be at? At what would be eleven for me, right? Eight a eight a.m. PDT. You said. Yes, yeah, so it would be eleven a.m. for you. Right, that's it. All right, great. Well, I'll talk to you guys next week then, and if not, in and and let's try and see what we can close up on the issues, or in the meantime. Okay, sounds great. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks, bye.